Dr. Carnivero, an Italian surgeon, has embarked on a journey to conduct the first ever human head transplant. Many are outraged. Claims of insanity are circling, and feasibility of this procedure is claimed to be non-existent. We asked the students of McMaster what they thought about the idea of human head transplant, and here's what they had to say. Over to you, Carolina. Thanks, Magnor. I'm here on campus, ready to find out what McMaster students think about this insane operation. Hi, um, I was just wondering if you have any opinions about the human head transplant that's supposed to take on place later this year. Um, yeah, so I, I don't think it's actually entirely ethical. It's not all about the mind. What about the spirit? Or, I don't know, just the human being. So after explaining the procedure, I was just wondering, do you think that this is potentially going to be successful this year? Uh, I don't think this year, but maybe in the near future. I think it's just an issue of if the procedure can, can guarantee a survival. I don't think it will work because the human body is way more complex than like the like the body of like a primate. And so if a primate only lived for like a few days, then I don't think that the human body will be able to sustain that kind of procedure and live for a long time. I think we can because uh, it's stuff like uh, putting like a finger back. I don't think there is enough research to say if it's going to work or not, but like if both parties are I guess okay with it. It seems to me that it's just a little more work in terms of wiring the neurons in the brain. The well, folks, you heard what McMaster has to say. Now back to you, Mahnor. Thank you, Carolina. Many are wondering, though, is there a method behind the madness? Is there any proof that this could work? And is there even a defined way to do it? We will now transfer to our correspondent, Ina, to find out more about this insanity. A head transplant, scientifically defined as a cephalosomatic anastomatosis, is the process by which a brain-dead donor body is used to provide a recipient, a new body. This involves the intricate transection of the spinal cord, as well as reattachment of the spinal nerves in the recipient. A surgery of this type will require a variety of different specialists from different fields. For example, neurosurgeons, neck, vascular, gastrointestinal, orthopedic, and plastic surgeons, totaling over 150 support staff and the surgery taking over 36 hours. Why don't we take a look, a closer look at the mechanism. The idea of head transplants began in the 1970s with a group that attempted the first head transplant in monkeys. However, the success of the surgery was limited due to the lack of knowledge on how to sever the spinal cord, thus leaving the monkey paralyzed. Since then, many scientists have set out to investigate how we can possibly cure paralysis and fix a severed spine. In a 2015 TED Talk, Dr. Carnavero explained that during spinal cord injuries, over 26,000 newtons of force is incurred, leading to irreparable damage. On the contrary, his procedure requires a simple cut that exerts less than 10 newtons of force and allows for spinal cord repair with a fusogen substance called PEG, or polyethylene glycol. In fact, in 1986, a group successfully repaired a severed fiber, which fully regained its function by rejoining it with PEG. PEG has been shown to rejoin nerves with reconstructive surgeries completed in mice and rats. In the proposed procedure, the healthy head receiving a body is the recipient. The donor body is a brain-dead patient who has consent for transplant either from a family member or a pre-signed organ donation. The two will be matched for height and immunotype to minimize rejection. In order to complete this surgery, a number of steps must be followed. Both bodies will be placed on anesthetics. Anticoagulants are administered to the donor body to prevent clotting in response to trauma, and antibiotics will be given to prevent infection. Both surgeries will take place in the same room, and the recipient's head is cooled to a low temperature to allow the surgeon to disconnect and reconnect it to the donor's body while only the spinal cord of the donor is kept cool to avoid whole body hypothermia and organ damage. Both patients are kept in standard neurosurgical sitting positions, and a turning stand acts as a crane used for shifting the recipient's head onto the donor's body. The spine will be cut with an ultra-sharp blade called the geminotome. The cut will be made between the spinal discs, which allows for a clear fusion of nerve cells together. Muscles will be color-coded in both the recipient and donor, with markers to facilitate later linkage. The recipient's head must then be joined to the donor's body within an hour to prevent brain damage, and the axons will be rejoined by applying PEG to both the head and the body endings. 
The recipient will be kept sedated for three days after surgery, and the immune system will continue to be suppressed to ensure no anti-donor antibodies are developed. After the transplant, there are issues with body image and identity. Psychiatric support is continued post-surgery to ensure that the patients are progressing well as they are dealing with these changes. Medical staff will look for positive patient perception and body image, as well as assess symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. So many may wonder, what is the purpose of a surgery like this, and who can benefit? Well, there are a number of peripheral neuromuscular disorders, such as muscle atrophy, that currently don't have a cure, and a surgery like this could provide patients with a better life outcome. So far, the surgery has been done in uh, two cadavers in China in 2017. However, due to the fact that they were dead, uh, survival could not be evaluated. The surgery is set to occur later this year with a live selected patient by the name of Valery Spiridonov, a young Russian man who suffers from a muscle wasting degenerative disease. Over to you, Mahnoir. Thanks, Ina. And that's a wrap for today, guys. We'll see you next time on 600 Seconds of Science. Stay safe, stay educated, and love science.